Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Onus and today I'm doing a, I'm doing a quickie since this is a very short album. It's an EP by uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, Tool. A uh, big fan. Um, this is actually their first release before all of their studio albums. Um, yeah, this is Opiates, 1992. This is the first like original release by the band. Before this, they had a demo album out, which is called 72826. Uh, if you if you're wondering what that means, I believe if you typed it in on a uh, on you know one of those old ass cell phones, you know where you have to you know type the number multiple times to get some kind of letter, you know. If you even know that, you know, a flip phone or whatever, or like a, uh, like a Nokia or something, you know, a hard end brick. Um, and if you, you know, type in all those numbers, you get Satan, pretty funny, you know, because parents were, sca uh, were scared of stuff of, uh, you know, tool and metal like that, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> If, if Tool, Tool doesn't want to be called metal, you know, they, want, they just want to be called a rock band, you know, which is fair. Yeah. They, they kind of are in the middle, I would say. Uh, but yeah, we only have six songs on there, 26 minutes of music. Uh, it actually got three stars by all the critics. All music, uh, Karang and Rolling Stone. I think we're listening to a different album because this was awesome. I don't know if you're tone deaf or something, Rolling Stone is of course, all music is kind of uh, with their head under the sand and who cares about Kerrang. Uh, so we get Sweat, which is the opening track, uh, just a very appropriate op opening track, you know, just kind of does everything that it needs to do. Um, yeah, you know, you have some great bass part by Paul Diomar, which was the original bass of the band. Um, yeah, and just overall a very solid opening track, 3 minutes and 46 seconds, you know, pretty consistent length too. So, uh, yeah, you know, not a lot to say here, uh, it was a good opening track and I enjoyed it. And then we get Hirsch, which is, um, I believe, the only single of the album. Uh, you have, of course, a great bass opening by Paul Neil Moore and then that, fuck yeah, <laughs> I cannot speak for the life of me or sing. Because um, you know I'm kind of dried up. Um, yeah, yeah. But this song overall kicks ass. Uh, the vocals by Manny Jemskin are just incredible to listen to. Just his screams in general. We're, we're already so huge on this EP right here. Awesome track. Um, it doesn't really do a lot. You know, it's just an awesome track. I think. Uh, yeah, and you know it just kicks ass. You know, two, two minutes and forty eight seconds. Not a lot, not a lot to talk about here on this EP in general, but it's still an awesome track. Then we get part of me, which is a very e extreme track. Uh, you know, the band is saying uh, you're a part of me, and then the bass kicks in. And there's some symbols by uh, Danny Carey. Uh, da -da 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 you know, it's just a very catchy, you know, just a very like kind of a cheeky song, I would say, just very appropriate for the album. It's just a very fun song in general. I, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of it, honestly. And then we get cold and ugly, and uh, around this time the album gets really extreme. Like you know, the vocals by Maynard are just incredible. Uh, cold and ugly is still kind of like a, a warming up song. Uh, this song is very, uh, very great. Uh, four minutes long, you know. This song kind of mixtures into, well, you know, cold and ugly. So. Like that guy is trying to speak out with Cold and Ugly because, you know, he is Cold and Ugly. So he wants to speak out because, you know, he is more than just, you know, a physical appearance. So he's just kind of screaming and just kind of, you know, shouting it out, you know, everything because he wants to be noticed. And so this is a very, well, I don't want to say relatable because, I mean, look at this, come on. Uh, but uh, it's still a very, like, you know, for some people it's relatable, maybe for you. But um, yeah, it's just a very solid track, four minutes long, you know, it's the longest track so far. So there we go. Then we got Jerk Off and this song is fucking incredible, mate. Um, like the, this, you know, the, the riffs are really hypnotic, you know, I have some really like hypnotic riffs by Adam Jones, you know, some of his best early uh, performances on there. Uh, just an incredible riff. 
uh, just that scream by main is just, just so awesome. Uh, you know, I love that scream. This is pretty much my favorite song of the album because of the scream, because of the riff. Um, you know, uh, how did the ending lyric go again? Uh, Shoot you in the fucking head. Uh, and this, you know, reminds me a lot of like of Bullet in the Head by Rage Against the Machine. And actually, this EP and that album were released on the same year. So, yeah, you can see. You can definitely see the uh, influences by both bands, you know, by Rage and Tool, you know, together. Uh, which, you know, I love both bands, so there we go. Uh, and then the final track is Opiate. This is a very funny track to end off. It is kind of serious in the first half. And then after uh, 5 minutes and 20 seconds, after just an awesome track with awesome bass, great drums, great guitar, there's great screams by Maynard. You get like the last, um, or yeah. Um, you, you you get 50 seconds of silence and then for two minutes you get basically a kind of Bob Marley kind of reggae vibe with Maynard saying that, um, um, you know, he's kind of your lazy boy, um, <laughs> you know, what is he even saying on this track, like uh, he, he's, t he's tall and pissed on your lighter or something. Um, you know, you got fucked in the ass or something, <laughs> something like that. He's saying really weird stuff on this track, but as, you know, I still really like it because it's it's Maynard being you know a, a clown, which I still kind of enjoy because you know you know you gotta have a sense of humor with Tool and you know Maynard knows what he's doing. So there we go. He's a he's a very smart guy. You know, has the wine business going on. The you know. Perfect Circle, Pussifer, Tool, hopefully a new album next year, you know. Uh, yeah, I really love this album, or this EP for that matter. There's not a lot to talk about here because it's just such a short EP, it's only 26 minutes. But it's still Tool, it's still an awesome EP, so I'm gonna give this record a 9.2. Uh, yeah, it's only slightly weaker than Undertow because, you know, Undertow has more tracks and it's an actual album, you know. But outside of that, it's, you know, it's still great EP, you know, well, you know, this is not an actual album, but, you know, it's an, it's an EP, so there we go. Uh, thank you for watching this video, let me know what you think about this album in the comments down below, or this EP for that matter. Uh, yeah, uh, do you want me to review their demo album, you know, the, the Satan one, or... You know, I'm kind of questionable if I can even listen to it at all, but I will try. I had it at one point, but you know, not anymore. Uh, or, wait, I have it on vinyl, I believe, so yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, and their live album, how's it called again? Uh, Slival. How can you forget that? Biggest tool then. Uh, yeah, so Slival and Satan. Uh, let me know if you, if you want me to review those records, that live album and that demo, which are not, you know, actual albums, but. You know, uh, let, let me know in the comments if you want me to do it anyway, because, you know, I'll do it. I thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.